Hello and welcome to Lesson 2.1 in the Python tutorial series. Over the last few episodes we've been looking at how for loops work and what I want to do with uh, this lesson right here is take a look at how we can use the for loop to present text in a more interesting way for some of the smaller adventure games and text-based adventure games that we've been writing throughout this entire series. What we'll be doing today is writing a uh, the framework for what could be a text adventure game, and then we're going to convert some of what we do using for loops to present the text kind of in a delayed manner. It'll look uh, really cool, and it can add some flair to the games that you've been writing. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 2.1. So here we are in the Python programming environment. For this example right here, we're going to write a, a short program. It's not going to have a lot of user interaction in it, but the idea is uh, imagine that you have a player and they're trying to defuse a bomb and they've got a 50-50 chance of either doing it correctly and winning or uh, doing it incorrectly and losing the game. So we're going to set up uh, the framework for a program that gives the user a 50-50 chance to have success. To get started on that, I'm going to start by uh, importing the random module, we'll need that to give our user a 50-50 chance. And we'll actually, the first line of code, we'll go ahead and uh, pick a random number between 1 and 2. So we'll say that number equals random.randint 1 or 2. So this is going to return either a 1 or a 2. That'll give us a true 50-50 chance to determine whether or not the player has won the game. Next, I'm just going to initialize a couple of uh, string variables that we can use for printing. So I'm going to say message1 is equal to, you see the bomb sitting in front of you. Message2 will say something to the effect of, you are quite nervous, but you know you must take a chance. Message 3 will say, the clock is ticking, you make your decision, and cut a wire. And so those are, that's going to be kind of the lead up. So those messages 1, 2, and 3 will print every time that the user starts the game, and then we'll have to program in a check to see if the user has won the game or not. Of course, by now that should be second nature. We're just going to do a simple if check and we'll say if the number is equal to 1, then message 4 will equal. And we'll have this be the win condition. Uh, you snip the wire, the countdown stops, you have diffused the bomb. So if that random number is equal to 1, then the user has won. And if that number is equal to 2, then message 4 is going to equal, uh, you snip the wire, kablam, you have blown up. And so now we have... Uh, a, a quick random check here that's going to determine whether or not message 4 lets us know we've won the game or whether or not message 4 tells us that we've lost the game. The next step in this program is simply printing out those messages. So in order to do that, let's simply print message 1, print message 2, print message 3, and print message 4. If I run this program now, we should very quickly see whether or not we've won or lost. So we'll go ahead and execute this program here. And we have a syntax error. It looks like uh, on the string right here, I forgot to close it off with the uh, delimiter there. And actually, it looks like I did that here too. So I had a couple of syntax errors there, but this should be ready to go now. 
And when I run this program, we can see the bomb is in, sitting in front of us, and kablam. So this first iteration of our uh, program, uh, we blew up. If we ran it again, we blow up, and we've diffused the bomb. So in three runnings, we've bl blown up twice, and we've diffused the bomb once. So in theory, our program is running right here. Well, this is all well and good, but it's really not that interesting. I mean, let's, let's be honest, it's not that interesting of a program anyway, but it would be a little bit more of a cliffhanger for our user if they had to read the first three messages and then we gave them maybe a slight pause. And in the past, we've used things like the input statement to pause the execution, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, for loops to create some style to how we present this to our end user. To use this technique, we're going to have to import the time module. That's because I'm going to have to tell my program to sleep. And we're going to have it sleep for very short periods of time, but I'm certainly going to need to be able to uh, use the time.sleep uh, command in this program. So let's start by singling out message number one. Instead of simply printing message number one, I'm going to pair this with a for loop. So I'm going to say for i in message one. Now, if you remember back to lesson 1.1 in this new series, since message one is a string variable, our for loop is going to iterate over each character in message number one. We're no longer simply going to print message number one. Instead, we're going to print i. Now, if we ran the program right now, it would look a little bit silly. You can see we, we've printed the entire message down the screen, and that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I want each of these characters to print one after another, kind of like they do in these final three messages. The way I can do that is by printing comma end equals, and then just put a, not an empty string right here. This will signify to Python that we don't need to press return after every character, and we can simply print all of these characters in a single line. By adding this end equals and running this program, you can see it's, it's not really that different than it was before. It now prints exactly as it did the first time, even though this message is in a for loop. But since we have it in a for loop, we can now use the time.sleep command to our advantage. I'm going to have the program time.sleep for a very short period of time. Um, let's put in like 0 0.04 seconds. Now, as we print this message, each character will have a 0 0.04 second delay in displaying on the screen. When we execute the program now, you can kind of see the text ticking across the screen. Now you may have noticed that message one and message two are printing on the exact same line. That's because after the final print, this end equals is still prompting Python to continue the next print at the end of message one. So we can fix that by simply putting an empty print statement right here at the end of the for loop. To give you uh, an example of how this time.sleep command is impacting our program, let's imagine for a second that we bump this up to 0.1 seconds instead of 0 0.04. When I run this program now, you can see the print the, the text prints a lot slower, you know, a little, uh, little over twice as slow as it was when we had it delaying by 0 0.04 seconds. I'm now going to repeat that for each message that I want to print. So again, I'm going to say for i in message 2. We're going to print i with the end and empty string with a time.sleep command of 0 0.0, we'll go with 0 0.05 and we'll change this one to a 0 0.05 as well. At the end of that, we'll put the empty print. That will take the place of print message number two. And in fact, we'll copy and paste this block of code. Change this to message number three. And we'll test this program right now, even though message four is still going to display really quickly. If I execute this program now, 
we can see that the text is taking a much longer time to print. Now you can adjust that time.sleep however you see fit. But now we're building a little suspense into our program. It's not really known to the user whether they're going to win the game or not. Between message three and message four, I'm just simply going to add an input, press enter to continue message. This will force the user to actually have to press the button to simulate them snipping the wire. And then I'll say 4i in message 4. We're going to print i with the end value and time.sleep. And we'll add this one for one second. That might be a little bit excessive, but this will uh, kind of really build that suspense, especially considering that you snip the wires the first sentence in both the win and lose condition. So as a user, I don't really know whether I've won or lost until I get to this point right here. Either the countdown stops or kablam. So let's run this program now. So you see the bomb sitting in front of you. You're nervous, but you know you have to take a chance. The user doesn't know whether they've won the game or not yet, even though that's been determined by the random number that's already been generated. Our program knows whether they've won or lost, but the user doesn't. We get to the end of the three messages, we press enter, and I can see right now that one second was way too excessive. That is not printing out nearly fast enough, so let's just uh, wait it out for just a second. You snip the wire and we'll see whether or not the user is one. Nope, the user has lost, so we're gonna, we're gonna break that. Uh, we certainly need to change the this right here. So let's go ahead and change all of these to a much shorter time. We'll go 0 0.03 for our entire program. Try that program again and that definitely looks a little bit better. And we've won the game. And that's really all there is to using the for loop with string variables to create some stylized text presentation for your text adventures. And that's going to do it for lesson 2.1 in the Python tutorial series. Hopefully you found that interesting and it's something that you can take to the smaller programs that you've been writing to add some flair and some suspense to those games. Now what we're going to be doing in the next lesson is looking at accumulators, which are variables that are used in conjunction with uh, for loops to keep track of the number of times certain conditions occur. But uh, we'll be taking a look at that in the next lesson. So thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get to every one of them and answer any questions that you may have. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.